Kia ora. Robert McLaughlin here. Welcome to week 11. This week we're going to look at a whole range of topics all related to nonlinear differential equations, different phenomena that they can do. Last week we looked at fixed points and how to understand the behavior of the solution near a fixed point by looking at the linearization of the uh, differential equation at the fixed point. This uh, week we're going to start by looking at periodic solutions. Now, so can suppose that dx dt equals f of x, that's a system of first order differential equations. So x here is living in the phase space Rn, so it's a system of n first order differential equations. A periodic solution is one that returns to its starting point. So vector x after some time, say big T, returns to its starting point. And the number t is going to be called the period. So that means every component of the solution, x1, x2, x3, x4, x5, and so on, they all have to be periodic functions, all with the same period. What would they look like in the phase portrait? Well, we'll just schematically draw R in then. It's easier to draw two dimensions. If here is my starting point, my initial condition x at time 0, I can go anywhere I want as long as after time big T I return to my starting point. Now remember orbits don't cross, so this curve can't cross, but it must return to its starting point. Which means the phase portrait of a periodic solution must be a simple closed curve in phase space. Now, simple closed curves, those are, those are closed curves that don't cross themselves. They're quite simple in the plane. They can be wiggly, but they all look roughly like distorted circles. But in higher dimensions, of course, they could be very complicated. They could fly around in space, and they could, for example, uh, not, uh, be knotted curves. You can also have lots of periodic solutions. I could have another one over here. Another one over here. miles away as long as I come back to where I started. So, how do you find these periodic solutions? Well, you might uh, have to look for them numerically by solving the differential equation numerically and working out for which initial conditions does the solution return to its starting point. But sometimes the uh, periodic solution will be quite simple, namely a circle, and in that case you, you can find them using polar coordinates. So polar coordinates these come up uh, in lots of different branches of mathematics. So I'm going to have, I'll just switch to x and y for convenience. That side of the triangle is x, that is y, that is r, and that is theta, which is measured anti-clockwise from the positive x-axis. So the equations that define polar coordinates, uh, r is the square root of x squared plus y squared, and I'll, I'll write that like this. And tan theta is going to be y over x. So those are the formulas that define polar coordinates. If you know x and y, you can find r and theta. If you know r and theta, you can find x and y. Let's write them the other way as well. Uh, x is r cos theta. y is r sine theta. There's just one catch, which you will recall. The angle is not unique. And if you know um, x and y, and you're trying to work out the value of theta, you do have to take care to check which quadrant theta will lie in. Now, how does this come into differential equations? Well, suppose I have uh, dx dt equals some function of x and y, and dy dt or with some function of x and y. I could do a change of coordinates. Instead of using x and y as my dependent variables, I could change to r and theta. And we'll see in, a, in an example in a second that that might simplify the differential equation enormously. So to do that, I'm going to have to work out the chain rule. The differential equation is telling me dx dt and dy dt, but in the new coordinates, I really want to know what are dr dt and d theta dt. Looking at those equations at the top, you can ask yourself, well, which ones should I start with? If I started with the ones on the right and differentiated with respect to t, 
that would give me an equation of the form dx dt equals something. But I don't really want that directly. I really want what dr dt is. So I should be starting over here. So let's take that equation. Think of x, y, and r all being functions of t and differentiate both sides of that equation using implicit differentiation with respect to t. And I will get derivative of r squared is 2r times the derivative of the inside function from the chain rule, which is dr dt. Derivative of x squared is 2x dx dt. Derivative of y squared is 2y times dy dt. And on the right-hand side, I know everything. I know x in terms of r and theta, I know y in terms of r and theta, and I know dx dt and dy dt from the differential equation. That will help me, uh, that will let me write everything in terms of r and theta. What about the second one? Well, I remember that the derivative of tan is 6 squared times the derivative of the argument. What about the derivative of y over x? I'm going to use the quotient rule. Bottom times the derivative of the top minus the top times the derivative of the bottom all divided by the bottom squared. I really want d theta dt. So that tells me d theta dt divide through by 6 squared. Well, remember that 6 theta is 1 over cos theta. So I'm going to get cos squared theta over x squared times x dy dt minus y dx dt. It's a big calculus exercise. But of course, x is r cos theta, so I can substitute that in, and away I go. So there are formulas for these that are given in the textbook, but it's really not so difficult each time you need to change the polar coordinates to just write down these equations and work out the derivatives by yourself. And that's what I'm going to do in the example. Here is the example. There's my formulas for polar coordinates. And here's my example. Dot here, x dot, that's just a shorthand for derivative with respect to time. x dot means dx dt. Do I have a blank page coming up? Yes, I do. So here we go. So r squared is x squared plus y squared. Therefore, r, r dot equals x, x dot plus y, y dot. There I've cancelled the twos. That is equal to x x dot is x minus y minus x. Now here I look ahead, I see an x squared plus y squared, and since I want to change into polar coordinates, I'm going to write that as r squared. That's the x, x dot plus y times y dot, which is x plus y minus y r squared. Now I have a, in the first term I have a minus x, y, and in the second term I have a plus x, y. So they will cancel. Then I have an x squared plus, here I have an x squared, here I have a y squared, x squared plus y squared is r squared, minus, the other terms have a common factor, r squared, and it's x squared plus y squared again, so it's minus r to the fourth. Divide both sides by r, r dot is r minus r cubed, which is r one minus r squared. And remember, r is the radius, so r has to be greater than or equal to zero. Now I see why I left myself a blank page. I want to take tan theta equals y over x and differentiate that with respect to t. Tan theta equals y over x. Therefore, 6 squared theta times theta dot is equal to xy dot minus yx dot all divided by x squared. x y dot is x plus y minus y r squared minus y times x dot, which is x minus y minus x r squared all divided by x squared. Now let's look for some simplification. I have a plus x y and a minus x y. They cancel. And I have a minus xy r squared and a plus xy r squared. 
and they cancel, leaving me with x squared plus y squared. Well, that's r squared. I want to write everything in terms of r and theta, so I use x equals r cos theta. Now the r squareds cancel, and I get 1 over cos squared, which is equal to 6 squared theta. 6 squared theta times theta dot equals 6 squared theta. So I get theta dot equals 1, and I had r dot equals r, 1 minus r squared. So this differential equation in polar coordinates is equivalent to this very complicated nonlinear looking one. Well, it's still nonlinear, but it's much simpler that I had up here. So I've taken that differential equation and I've transformed it into polar coordinates. And now it's easy to sketch the phase portrait. Theta dot is 1. That just means the angle increases at a, at a constant rate. The R equation has some fixed points. When the right hand side is 0, R equals 0 and R equals 1. So I immediately get that when r equals 0, it stays 0. That's a fixed point at the origin. And when r equals 1, the radius stays at 1, but the, theta, the angle increases at a constant rate. Which means I've got a periodic solution. In fact, it's just um, x is going to be equal to cos t and y is going to be equal to sine t. What about the other solutions? Well, the phase portrait of the R equation there is quite simple. It's got two fixed points at R equals 0 and R equals 1. The right-hand side is positive when R is between 0 and 1, negative when R is bigger than 1. So if the initial radius is between 0 and 1, R will increase and tend to 1. So I get solutions that look like this, with theta increasing at a constant rate, spiraling out, and if r starts bigger than 1, r tends to 1, and I tend towards that periodic orbit, which means this is a stable periodic orbit. And from the equation theta dot equals 1, that the angle is increasing at a constant rate of 1, the period is 2 pi. Now, there is another way to draw the phase portrait, which would be to do it numerically. I want to draw lots of solutions with different initial conditions, where the initial condition is taken from a mouse click. So here's a little M file. Figure just uh, opens a new figure window. For i equals 1 to 15, that's just a little loop where I'll choose 15 different initial conditions. And this command g input will um, capture the initial conditions from the mouse click. The commented line there in green, that was the version that worked in MATLAB, and I t turned out I had to change it slightly when I switched to Octave here. Here I'm calling OD45 and DE11, or differential equation week 11, is the name of the routine that contains the differential equation. Here it is here. It's just exactly the formula that uh, I was writing out in mathematical notation earlier. So let's run this file phase. I've just called it phase.m. And I click for where I want my initial condition and it draws um, the solution. So it started here, spirals in towards the periodic solution. Okay, I'm not sure what that error was, so let's just run it again. Click on the initial condition. There's a solution that spirals in towards the circular orbit. Different initial conditions. 
gives me different solutions. You can see the unstable fixed point near the origin. Outside, the solutions all fall in very rapidly to the periodic orbit. So that's another very practical way of drawing a face portrait, especially if you don't have any idea to begin with what it looks like. If I didn't have this idea of doing the, the polar coordinates, I could have just drawn the face portrait numerically and that would have alerted me to the fact that there was a, a circle sitting in there in the face portrait, suggesting that polar coordinates would have been a very good idea.